We praise of the year and say, Lord, every good word of you that was sent from the beginning of 2021 to this point that is not yet a reality in my life, but I'm wasting your word. The Jeremiah, what have you seen? He said, I will hasten my word to perform. We turn that to prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. May God make all your prayers reality in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes the seasons of your life can betray your understanding of the workings of God upon you. God can begin to take you through processes and seasons of life such that you might be tempted to look at what those seasons bring without understanding the operation of the divine upon your life. Now I said out the journey to pray and see God's face more through the night, it has been awake. For the past two weeks now, I started and um, I have not lifted up a prayer point till day. Just wake up, bring the Holy Ghost, and just enjoy myself. Not a prayer point. Why? Because sometimes you find out that what you are trying to pray for has been answered. So sometimes you are looking at and asking God, what do I even want to ask? You know, most of the times when you don't even have that kind of time for God, you feel there are so many things to pray about. But by the time you now approach His presence, then you begin to ask, what do I really Because when you begin to lift up those prayer points, you realize that He has actually answered them all. The only problem was your eyes was no more on them because you were considering the fruit from the current seasons of your life. At one of the nights, I was just wondering, I said, Lord, should I ask you to answer my prayers? Shall I ask you to give me answer? Shall I ask you to give me result? What more like when I can turn around and see how much you have done? Are we together? By simple statements. So sometimes begin to look at the workings of God on your life. It gives a perfect interpretation of where you are with Him than the seasons of life you are what in. Imagine Jesus at the cross deciding to think and calculate that that is the dealings of God with His life in a sense of his level of what relationship so he feels the more he suffers the more it means that the father is not happy with him so that's how we look at life sometimes right he sees the pain the nail getting through his hands and you know possibly even those in his days will have interpreted it and say oh we wish he was very close to god such a thing wouldn't have happened but they didn't know it was just what a season of life but he couldn't interpret his life that way he had a perfect understanding. And how do we know Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2? The Bible says, Who for the joy that was set ahead of him? His attention was more in a season beyond that season. Knowing fully whether it's a phase of life he must of necessity go through. Are we following? Like he would tell John the Baptist, suffer it to be so for now. Not forever. For now. Just to fulfill what? All righteousness. So a man must understand where a season comes, he has to suffer it to be so. Are we following? Not him questioning God, where are you? But saying, Lord, I rejoice in this, for in my weakness, you are more glorified. That's what Paul said. It's an understanding that can make a man say, I'm happy. It gives me much joy than I'm in a state of weakness. It's a kind of spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Can we just bless God and say, Father, we thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the testimonies. Be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, I've had so many wonderful testimonies. Shepherd came some few days ago and was sharing a testimony of a young man. I can't remember him right now. I don't even know what he looks like. But I know that you said he killed my seat. You, you invited him for the FIV? Uh, I, I don't know him. He was just saying testimony I don't know. And why he came to my seat, he was supposed to spill, right? Again. Okay, he was spilling the first one. And I told him, what did he say? I told him, I said, you declared, go, your name will be on the list. <laughs> and he said, he came back to them and said, imagine, you know, he just said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of the times you struggle when you think you are the one doing anything. I know it's not my job, so why should I keep myself? Some of you think it's when you put so much of energy in the team that makes it happen not so i'm just one sent to do an assignment i'm not the one actually doing yes. but you know if you see an angel often some of you know they're like you'll have collapsed 
Is that not so? Just sometimes the density of, the, of his presence in the service, they're already falling everywhere and breaking chairs. Hmm? Imagine that they now decide to be a country. Some of you will not be able to stand. So he has to come through men. All right? To through them relate with you. And I only asked him one thing, right? You said, I asked him that if God do it for you, will you testify? That's the last statement I made. And is he graduating? His name was, you know, is he We had one of our daughter like that, them love it. She took him, I think, on that FYP day, and everybody was dancing, but she was crying. So why she, she had a problem first semester, that the course first semester, had another course second semester. So she came on my seat and was crying. And her tears wet my laps because she held my leg and was crying. And so was the broken. She said, sir, I am happy that I'm doing FYP. I won't graduate. I said, who told you? I said that I said today I send all of you for <laughs> None of you is permitted to stay. They waved two of the cups up. Very crazy, crazy miracle. Are we together? So God is faithful. God is faithful. And we bless him for everything. Everything. One of my daughter, she sent a message about a few months ago. And I don't know, I think she heard the message of um, Debbie Abu's testimony. And so she sent me a message and she said, Papa, please, I beg you. I heard this testimony and I want you to duplicate it for me. I am sending this as a seed. And I don't want to look for a job after NYC. I laughed. And I said, like, Jesus, be it to you. God, do you. <laughs> so, you know, my hand is not inside. It's your feet. <laughs> so sometimes I can just learn the skills of Jesus. <laughs> and then she called me a day before and told me, Papa, I just got a job as managing a social media platform. I think for about $100. But just between 9 a.m no one in the afternoon and i think six in the evening and i was very happy i said okay it's no problem but well, bless god i'm happy that your faith has made the old <laughs> <laughs> so we bless very crazy crazy miracles crazy crazy testimony i can keep recounting and telling you as many as i can on my phone everywhere sometimes i just see some messages say it has happened i don't know who they are a young man approached me i told us last week while i was coming home and he was running to me. I said, what's the problem? He said, I'm a master student. Are you not so sensible? I said, I'm the one. He said, I do come to meetings during the, 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 the break time. And you know, I called them one of the sites and prayed for all of them. I said, don't worry. All your academic issue is going to be solved. Just go. Don't worry. Believe. And he told me he had six A's, one B. So he was jumping. He said, I've been looking for service. I think online, they say everybody has been shouting and acting every day. What is the problem? What is the problem? So I wonder what the first service will look like. All right? So let's trust God. Okay. What I'm saying in essence is beyond the fact that there is no physical service, you can still get a miracle. You know, Paul said, Paul said in Corinthians chapter 12, at a certain point in time, he found out that the people he raped begin to lower his value. In a sense that they begin to look at other apostles and begin to feel like he was not as anointed or as powerful as they are. Second Corinthians chapter 12 stay there. And while they were there, he got angry and began to, he said, should I boast? But you have compelled me to. I need to defend my what? Apostleship. He said, am I not better than other apostles? Now he began to talk about, he said, I know a man talking about himself. Had such kind of encounter. They were called off to tell everyone this and this and this and this and this and this and that. He said, is it because I came as weak to you? From verse 7 downward, you're going to see the storyline there. I know. It is sometimes I did that to give you some level of access to relate to me. Do you understand that? But because I don't get to act the way you see maybe others act, then you begin to feel possibly you don't know what you were relating with. So he began to talk about his experience. And that sometimes a man might choose to bring or manifest some levels of witness for his sake and not for your sake. I will explain. Just follow me. You know, I can sit in this meeting and ask one of you to preach. And while you are preaching, I begin to take notes. And you can be quite stupid enough to, after the meeting, tell people, imagine I preach, he writes notes. Hmm. Without understanding that it was an intentional act to increase your honor before, just to make them. I can look at you and say, wow, 
What is on you is triple food of what I carry. If you refuse my statement, that's the sign that you are mature. But when you accept what I said, you are very stupid. But I'm saying that not because of you, but because of myself. Like Paul will say, I want to glory in my words because I want to put myself under what? Subjection. Do you understand that? So your attention might now begin to get, you know, misinterpreted of the caliber of person Paul was because of the kind of way he chose to what relate with them. That's why he questioned them. Is it because I came as weak? Is it because I chose to relate that way? July begin to tell, then he begin to list certain kind of what experiences. We'll talk about that some other time, okay? When God meets with a man, when God meets with a man. Psalm 84, Psalm 84. The problem there is when we watch the people of the world, all right? And we see any time mortals have the privilege of encountering or having to interact with deities. How their responses are, how their approach are to that kind of scenario. Anytime you see the Shango worshippers wanting to go to pay him an homage, we saw that they even changed their costumes. Some of them make sure the costumes are sanctified. When they get into that place, they order their steps not to miss some kind of things or make some kind of what? Mistakes, right? Just on the earth. How they relate with just even deities that are not real. But now, when it comes to our relationship with God, when it comes to our encounter, you know in the old, most of the times when God wants to encounter a people, he gives them 72 hours. He said, prepare in three days. I will visit them. So he expects that they make certain preparations for what? His visitation. But you know the church, sometimes we can get so accustomed to the traditions of coming to church such that we don't make preparations for an encounter. There is a way a man can encounter his God. When I wake up at night and say I want to pray, there is a way I do it. There is a kind of posture of heart I carry, confident enough that I am encountering what? A deity. Psalm 84 from verse 1, he said, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord with my whole being, body and soul. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Three, yet the sparrow hath found an house and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thy altars, O Lord of hosts. My king and my word, God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. 6. Said when they who pass into the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pool. 7. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appear where? in Zion. They go from what? Strength to strength. So every privilege to be in his presence is an impactation of strength. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you fall down or not, something was added to your life. That's why I told us that we must be careful to think that the anointing is by oil being poured on you. No, the anointing comes through what? Words. The Bible is speaking in Act 10 that's a, telling us how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and we what? <gasps> but how did he do that? We saw a upon Jesus? No! He just shouted the Bible said, and the heavens were open and he shouted on him. This is my beloved son. Hear him. And from that day on, everything on earth. Heaven. Do you understand that? So men are anointed through what? Words. They are anointed through words. As words are released towards your direction, the impartation of the Holy Ghost is... That's why, look at what Jesus said in John 6, 63. He said, the words I speak, they are spirit, life. When he talked about the need for them to partake of his body, the Bible said they left him. And he asked Peter, won't you also go? And he said, to whom shall we go? For you hold the anointing oil, Kogoya. He said, you hold what? The words that brings about what? Verse 8, O God of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. Verse 9, Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. 10, I'll stop at 10. For a day in thy courts is better than what? A thousand. A day in thy courts is better, not equivalent. That time spent. <laughs> this is our understanding that makes a man outstanding. 
that time spent in your presence is better than a thousand anywhere else. So anytime I'm coming to church, anytime I'm getting into my secret place to encounter God, I must carry an understanding of what is about to happen to me. The church is too used to tradition. Where, you know, when we do things over time, it becomes a ritual. We just get to a point where everybody just kind of Bible on Sunday, you know, bounce to church without understanding what they are coming for, what is about to happen to them. And funny enough, do you know, no matter how much all these traditional worshippers are intermingled with deities, no matter how much they've done it for years, that honor and homage is still intact. Most of the times, those deities are kept in a bush, and yet they still, you know, they are careful the way they go approaching that deity. How much more your God that is real? Are we together? How much more? When you wake up on it, how do you prepare to meet the creator? You don't think about it. How do you make preparations? Or just let's just go to church. Because some of you have turned the church to a lecture theater. We have just come and get lecture notes and you know, go home. How do you prepare? What comes to your mind? That's why David said, I was glad. Something tickled in my inside when they said, Let us go where? To the house of the Lord. Something happened to me. Are we following? So it's a great wisdom to maximize your appearance before God. You must make preparation for such kind of what an encounter. It's not an ordinary meeting. Yes, though he's meeting with you through a man, but it's not what an ordinary meeting. Imagine you want to meet the president of the country. What do, do you do you even sleep that night? You're just thinking, hope I will not make a mistake. You begin to browse what are the you know the protocols of how I'm supposed to talk. I'm supposed to give him an handshake, everything. That's how it should be for you. So you must take responsibility for what? An encounter. For every reaction from the heaven is provoked by what? An action on the earth. Luke 3, 21 to 22. Quickly. Luke 3, verse 21 to 22. The Bible says, One day when the crowds were being baptized. How many people were being baptized? A man. Crowds. Crowds. Jesus himself was what? Baptized. As he was praying, the heavens were opened. 22, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my beloved son, and I am fully pleased with you. So what are the lessons we could get from here? Number one, there was a general heaven open. The Bible says there was crowds, and the heaven was what? Open. So there was a general heaven opened over that place just like it is here right now. That's why I keep telling people that one person can testify you have no excuse. It was that same anointing that did it. And it was made available in that same atmosphere. This is how I challenge myself and encounter. That's why most of the times I'm in meetings, get, possibly I don't even get slain into the spirit. I say, Lord, I receive your impactation. Whatever you are doing, I collect my own. You might not hit me strong in the spirit to get slain. But I receive mine. Because most of the times your work is might not require you to be cast into a deep sleep. You know, when the Bible says, and Adam was cast into a deep sleep, it's because the early writers of those days could not comprehend what he meant. He was actually slain in the spirit. So they said he was cast into a deep sleep. Do, do we understand that? Number two, look at what 21 said. And one day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized as he was praying the heavens open. There were crowds being baptized, only Jesus was praying. So we are all seated here right now. Now the sermon is going on. What is happening with your spirit? You are just sitting down, you are in church. Number three, only Jesus heard the voice. Only Jesus heard what? The voice. Do you know no man confirmed that Jesus was hearing anything? They were being baptized. Just like the way all of us can be here right now. Imagine there was a drum set and everyone just said, somebody say, bah, bah, bah. that's how everybody's going like that. And when the angels open your eyes, you are refusing to see. Because you are just somebody, you have entered it. You are just going to be here. And in the midst, sometimes I feel for the people when I sit in the midst of an encounter and I see how much men can see what I'm saying. And I begin to understand. Why can't they see the same thing? What was difficult there? The difference is because they are actually carried in the wings of the crowd. So whenever you come and meet with your creator, know that the heavens there is what? Open, because that's where he comes from. And what do you need to do? Be in prayers. Be in prayer. I didn't say you must disturb everybody, but in the spirit of your heart. Do we understand that? We say number three, only him heard what? The voice. That's why you must be sensitive. All right? Sensitive. You can be shocked as I'm preaching right now. You have collected just your own. The rest that I might say for the next three hours is not yours. 
that word just strike you, bam, you, and you hold it. I say, no, this is for me today. They spoke, this aspect is me, and I carry it. Because of, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, verse 1, it said the preparations of the heart is man. The answer is the Lord. So what comes first? Preparation. The heart must be prepared. Are we following? The heart must be prepared. So when you come, what are you looking for? When God meets with a man. Are we together? When God meets with a man. Number four, on holy him was the heaven open. <laughs> Let me explain to you. You know, we have two types of open heavens there. We have the general open heaven and a particular one. Now, the only reason why they were baptized is that something must come from the open. So there was a general open heaven. But on him, the Bible says he was praying the heaven open. Which heaven was opening again? So was it on a closed heaven John was doing baptism? But we are talking about a specific heaven over a man's life. Opened. And number five, the Bible says on him, the Holy Ghost was sin. How do you receive in God's presence? Number one, understand that the church is a spiritual environment. Any time, that's why the Bible says where two or three are gathered. In what? My name, I am there. Where two or three are what? Gathered. In my what? Name. Know it fully where I am what? There. So the gathering of believers is a spiritual what? Environment. It pains me how much I can see people come to church and be so distracted. Be so distracted. The way I'm so careful. Some of you know me. Even I'm careful. Very coordinated and careful. Because I'm just feeling, wow. Look at angelic beings everywhere. Let them not. Let me be careful. If a woman will have to be warned on how she had a need on how to do with her covering because the, so that she will not get the angel offended, then she know what happens in a spiritual environment. The interminglings of angels. Are we together? Number two, hunger. You must put great hunger for what you are looking for. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1. Pray, they pray. They give me a time I die. Where a man feels what I have, what I'm looking for. If I don't get it, I'm not what exists. That's wrong. You are so desperate to know that you cannot live without that thing alone. There must be hunger. Number three, focus. Fight distraction and wandering mind. Some of you are here in this house right now. You're already at home. Some of you are where you will be by 4 p.m. You're already there. That is, you have traveled. Avoid it. Number four, Put faith into whatever you do. They say, shout up and shout, praise the Lord. You sat down and kept quiet. Put faith in whatever you do. Five, sensitivity to know when actions are required. John chapter 2. The mother of Jesus said to the disciples, whatever I ask you do, do it. Sensitivity to know when actions are what? Required. Six, participation. Participate in the service. Get involved. No one is a service inspector or a service auditor. So I don't like the way she's taking the auto. She's supposed to tune it a little bit. Is that also? Say the English, that word he used during announcement, he's not supposed to use that English word. It's not that the word is not correct, but it's not right for the sentence. Oh, man. Your thing is this our boy in heaven. <laughs> Nobody is a service word auditor. You know, the problem there is when we are not in the glory, we see our nakedness. The Bible says, the man were not wearing clothes in Genesis. They were actually clothed with what? God's glory. But immediately the glory departed. That's why they begin to see what? Their nakedness, their faults, their mistakes. Have you seen where the density of the glory can be in a place? Right? A meeting of 7, 8 p.m. is already 10 p.m. You do not know time has reached. You are wondering, uh, where we come to church? Come to grace and you find out. <laughs> you, you just be ah now now and you'll be shocked you have spent five hours <laughs> that's what the glory does so participate seven worship in reckless abandon those of you are you dance like a big man oh man no you don't want to you don't want to shake the body a little bit because you are trying to coordinate your step possibly that girl you are looking for is close by so you don't want to disgrace your you know yourself there Worship in reckless words, abandon. If you don't throw your dignity before divinity, you never carry divinity. Mm. If you don't throw your dignity before divinity, you will never carry divinity in reckless abandon. Number eight, be expectant. Number eight, be expectant. 
expectation is the mother of manifestation expectation is the mother of manifestation be expectant in his presence be expectant the bible says the man at the beautiful gate act chapter 3 he was looking up to them expecting to receive expecting to receive expectation places demand on the anointing that's why in second kings the bible says prophet elisha was sick unto death and he died and the king of israel came to him look how the bible says he was sick unto death and he was died but the king came unto him and shouted my father my father the chariot of israel elisha came back to him read your bible and told him pick a bow you can place demand on the the move of god in an atmosphere is equivalent to the degree of expectation that's why the Bible tells us in Exodus 16 verse 16 that when the manna was released, God told them every man should take according to his hunger. He says some pack much more than they needed, some pack much less than they needed. When they went to the tent, it was exactly to their hunger. It was supernatural disappearing. So I can force myself, pull up the anointing, break the alabaster box, because that's one of the mystery you must understand for the anointing to flow in an atmosphere, break the box. I can do that right now out of my spirit and put it in an air. You can only carry what is equivalent to your hunger. So, most of the times, it's not the powerfulness of the meeting that matters, but the expectation of the people and the demand they choose to place. Do you understand that expectation places a demand? That's why I like hungry people. It places a demand. That's why I say a man comes to some meetings, he finds like he, did, he couldn't do manifest much like he would have done normally. Then he goes to another kind of meeting and he's something else on that day. I remember a meeting I went one time to Kadina. The, the, the expectation was so high. I went to represent one of my father there. So they've been hearing of me. So when I came, everybody was just waiting. The, 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 it was crazy on me. I said, everybody five kilometers on this road begin to pop. People were dropping on the street. I was off. You know you off. <laughs> You, I know I was, I was just normal. The thing was, I was scattered. It was too much. But the expectation of the people on um, the wealth of the spirit for those things to flee. Else, every man will do it by what? A struggle. So most of the times, we can, from our spirit, pick the degree of hunger of the people. It puts a demand on us. So there's a way you are, just know, mm, nothing is pressing this thing. You know, it's like a pressure, all right? Like a bottle of oil. When you press it, right? Then the liquid water flows out. That's what expectation does. So when we find out that ah, it's like it's me that is forcing this thing to want to come out, then you know something's wrong with the people. Do you understand that? Put expectation in place. Number nine, so in the glory. So in the glory. Especially when prophetic words are released towards your direction. Sometimes what you need to do is to pick a seed and drop and say, I connect it to it. So in the glory. The Bible says, and Abraham. In Romans chapter 4 from verse 17, 21, he said, And he, being not weak in faith, was giving glory to God that he will fulfill his promise. So one way we do that is when we sow in the glory. By putting an uncle that it's not believe. I'm thanking you already that you give me what you what said. Do you understand that? Finally on that, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. You know why? The things of the spirit... The Bible says the things of the spirit are foolishness to the carnal man, for they are spiritually what? Received. For they are spiritually what? Received. So when you pray in the spirit, when we release spiritual substance, you have to receive it first in your what? In your spirit. And they make manifestation where? In the physical. That's the difference. I've taught my children on that, why it's easy for you to pray for the sick. You know when you pray for the sick right now, maybe she's having a health challenge, and you put your hand on her right now. You are just praying in the air. Alright? But when I'm leaving, placing my hand on her. I'm placing my hand on her spirit. And I do that in my imagination. I'm on her spirit releasing them. Because it's her spirit that can collect the spiritual substance. Then whatever happens to her spirit must of necessity manifest on the physical because the spirit controls what? The physical. How do we know? If I decide to cast demon out of a person and I say out, you will see the person moving across this place without their will. As the spirit moves, it carries them. Whatever the demon does in the inside of them, they must follow, their body must follow. The science of accomplishment part two. The science of accomplishment part two. So we started the series last week trying to understand how can we produce results? A life full of profitability. What do we need to do? 
Say number one, we must give ourselves to information hunting. We saw in scripture how that God keep asking them, have you not what? Read. So if you are not giving to reading in this place, you are very far away from destiny. Train yourself. There is no impartation for reading. Men make up their mind to what? Read. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 1 to 2. He said, I, Daniel, understood by what? Books. That the time of the captivity of Israel is about to be over. I understood by books. So the reason that you are still captive in an area might be an information you are lacking there. Every area of your struggle ends with the input of an information. Every area of your struggle ends with the input of what? An information. After the Bible says in John chapter 8 that the truth you know sets you free. The truth itself, revelation itself is like written. The truth you know sets you free. So give yourself to what? Reading. Reading. Improve your mind. You improve your ideology, the way you think. Because sometimes you can be caged by your perception. Do you know how many people are having a problem right now even in their work with God? Because like Paul we say, they are not skilled in the doctrine of righteousness. Do you know what is the doctrine of righteousness? How that a man will be asking for forgiveness of something he did 20 years ago. How can he ever have a good work with God? Say, Lord, prove to me that you are forgiving me. Let water come out of this ground now. Who are you? That because of your sin, God should be causing water to come out of the ground. God said they are not skilled in the doctrine. And most of the time, people that behave that way find it very difficult to forgive others. Those, they feel God should behave like that. I've always told you a man that will set a criteria and say, someone must offend you 70 times 7, that's 190 times a day, even though you are a witch to count. <laughs> what criteria will he have set for himself? If he tells you that you should wait for 490 times, before you can now say, I will not forgive the person again. How much of criteria he sets by his own self? I will take care. Give yourself the information what? Hunting. Read. Your free time, engage in reading, engage in researching. Find truths for yourself. Whatever you are looking for might be hidden in a book. What did I say again? Whatever you are looking for might be hidden in a book. Number two, I said that you should covet always the grace and the favor of God. Covet always the grace and the favor of God. Romans 9 16. He said, It is not of him that will let or run it, but of God that show it. Make no point of correction. There must also be what? A willing and there must be a running. So that we are asking for the grace and mercy of God does not suspend the fact that you should walk. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Nevertheless, the grace was not what in vain. It made me work harder. So the grace comes to impact strength in you to do what you will not naturally be able to do. It doesn't suspend the fact that you need to work. He said the grace made him work harder so that he wrote 16 books of the New Testament. He worked harder. That men could look at your strength and marvel. How do you produce this kind of work? What supplies you with strength? Now you remember the prayer of um, Paul in um, Ephesians 3 and verse 16. That thou may be strengthened with might. There are men that get their energy from their physical body. There are men who are supplied with energy from the inside. You know, not every man lives by blood. The Bible says that when Jesus came back, he asked the disciples when he appeared. He said, Thomas, touch my flesh and bones, not flesh and blood. Because he was survived by another kind of what? Spirit. That's why the Bible says that the life of a teen is in the blood. The life of a teen is not the blood. It's blood. in the blood. So what is that thing? I'll tell you some other time. That's what is immortality. We a man no longer live by that natural blood. But sustained by the spirit, such that bullets, things of mortality cannot hold you captive. I remember one of my father in the faith, a woman came, he was praying in a prayer line, and the woman poured him a substance and ran. And he took his handkerchief and wiped his face. He was chopping. Poured it on the ground, the ground was up. No, it was actually the man is there like <clears throat> Are we together? That man doesn't survive by blood. Blood used to collect bullet too. <laughs> <laughs> Are we together? Compare the grace and the mercy of God upon what? Your life. The Bible says in Psalm 44 verse 3, It's our fathers told us that they got not the land by the strength of their hand. Neither did their, their right hand save them. But it means they were in the field fighting. However, the kind of weapons they had and the kind of battle they fought cannot give them that victory. It was what? That you had favor on them. 
them. Are we together? Number three, we said what? Don't become another. Don't try to be other people. You attract their kind of demons. Some of you are carrying, are carrying demons that are bigger than you right now. Because there are demons attached to positions. Number four, we said be what? Diligence. Put the work to avoid the hard. That's work hard. You put the work to avoid what? The hard. Five, we say be good to people. Compliment others. Celebrate them. Help them. Assist them. You can't carry the Holy Spirit and be evil spirit to everybody. Be good to people. Don't bring people down. Don't talk them down with your mouth because of the envy you have for the achievements and accomplishments. Number six, we said you should constantly what? Improve yourself. Be the best in your niche. Be difficult to be replaced or ignored. You can evaluate your value by how easy it is for you to be replaced or ignored. You can, in life, evaluate your value by how easy it is for you to be replaced or ignored. I repeat again, in life, you can evaluate your value by how easy it is for you to be replaced or ignored. Number seven, we say take what? Responsibility. Take responsibility for your life, for your actions, for your growth, for your family, for your finances, for your dressing, for your perception by others, for your environment and your health. Stop looking for people to blame. Buhari is not your problem. In that regime, people are still making it. So stop looking at it that he became pres and president because of you. Take responsibility. Every day you wake up and say, whatever becomes of my life, it was my decision. I will take full responsibility for it. I won't look for someone to blame. I won't look for economy to blame or a government to blame. I will take full responsibility for it. Number eight, master the art of delayed what? Gratification. We say be ready to sacrifice the immediate for the ultimate. Be ready to sacrifice a short-term appetite for a long-term gain. When you wear the cloth of tomorrow today, tomorrow you'll be naked. You marry the spirit of this end time, you'll be a widow in the future. To follow the craze of this time, tomorrow you'll be a madman. Are we follow? You'll be a madman. Are you not seeing people jumping out of the car and they are just talking to themselves? I said, I will get the money, the money will get me. I will get the money, the money will get me. <laughs> then you know the knot is off now. The Bible says, and what he doeth shall be forever. It is only what God do that is forever. Anyone that he was not involved can never be forever. It can never be. Don't envy it. Number nine, we said network with others. Reach out with the hand of fellowship to others. Build your influence with others. Number ten, we said fight every form of what? Distraction. Run away from distracted people. Focus is the womb of accomplishment in life. Whenever you say you want to have a dream, somebody brings something. <laughs> you know, a son of mine, he started, there's what we call in business world, we call it skyrocketing. Skyrocketing simply means moving with the craze of the moment. Alright? What do I call it again? Skyrocketing is a business terminology. It means moving with the craze of the moment. In crypto, we call it FOMO. You know what is FOMO? Fear of missing out. So he can stand up and call a coin tomorrow, Arome. Then give influencers to push it. They say, oh, I have to buy. Oh. So I'll not miss. I have to buy. Then he buy. Then tomorrow you coin zero naira. The rule against skyrocketing says a man is supposed to stay with a system. Build the system to a point before he can establish another system. So a young man will start right now with importation business. By the time he's trying to do his importation business, building it after two years, someone says, now nah, it's crypto. He will close it and then start crypto. As he's doing crypto, it has crashed. They say it's forest. He will leave it and do forest. Then he turns back after five years. Seeing that guy still in that importation business, a dominant man. And with the importation business, the guy is still now doing crypto. Because he has stabilized that system enough that he can now venture to other things and whatever happens there does not affect him. But skyrocketing, what is happening now? It's why the young people of our generation take time to build. You must give something all it entails then it will give you all the contents you must put time into any system you are building after two months you are, you are done with that you want to go to something it doesn't work like that you will crash everything you will crash what everything fight against distraction <laughs> do you understand that fight it with all your life if you have people that you know anytime you just want to do something they will send them say guy guy we get one to one you know those kind of people avoid them do you know the Bible tells us, you see Romans now, he said there are a kind of people we should mark. You don't know. Should I show you? Romans, Romans, Romans. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. He said now, Romans 16, 17, are we there? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. I mean, write their name on a piece of paper. Mark them which cause what? Divisions. 
whether they are dividing you from others or dividing you from your destiny. Because some of you and your destiny are in opposite direction. Mark them. Those that bring what offenses contrary to what you have learned. Make you behave in ways you have not been taught. He said after marking them what? Avoid them. To love everyone is a command, but to befriend them is choice. God will not force anybody on you, including the woman you will marry. The Bible says he brought her to Adam and didn't make a statement. It was Adam that said with his mouth, Behold, woman, the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. If Adam had looked at her and said, Evoluted goat, she would just have <laughs> Then God will see that again and say, let me think, what next? <laughs> no prophet can force any woman on you, including me, and say, if it's not this guy, you have missed destiny, your rib, all your ribs are complete, nothing is missing. I told you, it's a false doctrine, anything called missing rib. Only one rib ever missed in scripture, and that was Adam's own. The rest humans came through sexual intercourse. Or did you sleep? You slept, they removed somebody. No. Please! Let's don't get confused because I used to ask a question. If you claim there's something called missing rib, the Bible says when a man or a woman lost any of their spouse, they are free to marry again. So the person you marry is a spear one, right? <laughs> you can see your theology, we have a question mark now. So focus. Is that okay? Focus, focus, focus. 11. Cultivate discipline. Now continue from there. Part 2. Cultivate discipline. Proverbs 6 and verse 6 to 8. Eight. Look at what God is telling us. He said, go to the ant and learn our ways. Where God will begin to direct humans to learn from animals. Then there's a problem. <laughs> he says, she prepare our meat while it is what? Summer. Go to the ant and learn our ways. He said, she has no guide over us here. Nobody is there. Your parents are not in this school or in this environment to tell you to do the right thing. But discipline makes you do the right thing. Discipline saying, I will do what I will not normally do so that I can get what I will not normally get. That's discipline. If you say you wake up, wake up. Stop looking for someone to hit your head. And say, Lord, as I'm sleeping, when it's fine, talk to me, bang. You will sleep fine that day. Nothing will bang you. Wake up. If you say you will do a thing, do it. That's discipline. My children know me very well. It is difficult for me to be addicted. I have stages of addiction. I started with London yogurt. When I found out that the way it's going, one time I broke down in health and they disappointed me. There's no quality of Olandia yogurt or taste that I've not drank. The one food that type, I've drank it. So I felt with the way I drink Olandia yogurt, I think I've done to almost like 60 cartons. I'm not saying packets, cartons in my entire history. Even a t shirt they didn't give me. And then I was also breaking down in health, so I vowed it's over between me and me. Then I moved from Olandia yogurt to what? Smooth. So smooth. So one day, we were trying to do something in shop. I saw plastic bottle. I said, who was drinking all this? They say, Papa, is you. I say, smooth ends. No. Then they moved to fear. <laughs> and then I saw fearless was going to a point. When it's time for me to rest at night, my eyes like this. I said, ah. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> they say, size the fearless. I say, really? It ends. Now, from fearless we move to what? Anchor. That's where we are in now. <laughs> okay, they're in between. <laughs> are we together? Please, if you say you will stop a team. My just sometimes they used to wonder. Do you know, we ate bones. <laughs> a day. Ask them. We'll be here together. We'll chop bones 1,000. <laughs> What? One day I had to see that. I say, wait, is something wrong with us? <laughs> we know we start with 200, 200, 200. You have chopped one, one six, two k a day. One day I got angry. I said, come, this one, it ends now. <laughs> we are waiting. Even the woman until we know they soon again. No. <laughs> I said, I'm sure she'll go to a pastor and say, somebody has cut, cut, cut off my customer. Pray. <laughs> and now I'm lucky for you if I'm that customer. <laughs> Your pastor's prayer can't work. <laughs> Are we together? That's discipline. If you say you do a thing, do it. What is discipline? Let me explain to you. There are three things that gives birth to passion. It grows from discipline, 
from discipline to habit, from habit to passion. What is discipline? Discipline means I am doing what I would not normally want to do. Then over time, it will give back to what? Habit. What is habit? I am doing it even if I don't wish like what? Doing it. But it has gotten too used to me. Then from habit, it will give back to what? Passion. I now like what? That's how everybody that smokes started from. <coughs> over time, what happens? Let's just find that. You only shake if he doesn't put that cigarette. The over time, papa, he just goes. Do you understand that? So discipline gives back to habit, and habit gives back to what? Passion. Do you understand that? If you say you wake up to pray, pray. If you say you read five books, five books in a month, wake up and what? Read it. Are we together? If you read five books, wake up and what? Read it. Read it. Because some of you, the new year resolution you wrote, your list was longer than everybody in church that day. And when you write it, you are crying. Eight full scalp. And how terrible you are. They said, on your resolution, bring it to God and drop a seed. You put 20 naira. <laughs> no, God got angry and said, answer it yourself. Because some of you, Pastor, you don't know those that give long list are the ones that give the list. You don't know? Those that don't pay transport are the first enter bus. We know them. I'm, I'm into ministry. We know how these things are. Be what? Disciplined. If you say, I want to pray 30 minutes, stay there. Even when you are tired of prayer sleep, just make sure you are there till that time meet. I thought that's how I started. I, I thought that in a message, cultivating a lifestyle of what? Prayer. How I started a lifestyle of prayer. Starting from 30 minutes. I'll pray. It will look like I say I've not prayed. So when I, I just keep the team, play song, and you know, hmm, and sleep. Then, talk, 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 it's in Jesus' name we pray. Then we go out. <laughs> From there, we got so used to us, we said, let's try one hour. That's how we kept going to where we are today. So it's not as if I just woke up one day and I said, I want to pray seven to two hours. Stretch three days. At last. <laughs> and you know what you do consistently for 21 days? It becomes naturally part of it. Now, what? One of the ways to help you with discipline is, if you say you do it, you start immediately. Are we following? If you say you do it, you start what? Immediately. And hold yourself onto what? Accountability. Imagine there's so many things you will have accomplished in life. If all the I will do, I will do, you did have. Imagine it. There's so many things you have accomplished in life. Opportunities that came your way that you abused. Because I, I, I'm still thinking about it. See, planning and thinking through a thing is important, but don't spend all your life doing that. There is a place for taking action. How can they bring an opportunity and you're using three years to think? Oh, are we together? Because that's one of the things believers used to deceive themselves. Say, I'm thinking, I'm planning, I'm thinking for three years. A guy asked to act right now. You used two years. He did now, you wrote him a message now that I think is now God's way. My wedding is next month. <laughs> you are shocked. Don't let any lady do you guy. When you ask her, she just ask God, who next? <laughs> we have the book of Ruth. Don't you have the book of Esther? <laughs> but why are you making it look like it's only Ruth that's in the Bible? <laughs> Tell him to open our chapter. And you see things happening there. <laughs> you know, in Esther, the king was looking for wife. Mm -hmm. In Ruth, Ruth said this word. There are many revelations to that. Is that okay? <laughs> Number 12. Be patient. Be what? Patient. Be patient. James 5 and verse 11. James 5 and verse 11. Let's read. Are we there? James 5 11 said, let me read from the NLT. It said, we give great honor to those who what? Endure under suffering. Job is an example of a man who endured patiently. From his experience, we see how the Lord's plan finally ended in good. For he is full of tenderness and what? Mercy. Be, if you don't become patient, you will still do yahoo yahoo. Yes. It's in a bit of beating time that many people have doubled into something. You think you know the Bible? Wait, let the pressures of life come on you. Okay. Then you know you are patient. Patience has a reference point. It means you have to be under a pressure. That's when you can test your patience. Yeah, right now I say, are you patient? You say me yes. But wait, wait, wait. To be done from school and seven years, no year job. Then I know how patient you can be. Wait. Wait that you are done, you have a job. Seven years, you have not bought your first car. Then you are seeing really draw her, just wiping through your face like this. And shouting, Jesus is love. Jesus is love. But be what? Patient. 
the Bible says we see from his life how he ended. That this God does not use and dump men. Stay with him, be patient. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Proverbs 10. It had no sorrow to it. There are many people inside a car, but not just them alone in the car. It was a sickness. There's both a disease and a human being is riding a car and you are there kissing it. I claim. That's why some of you carry all of us. Everything you see on the road, you claim. Now you don't know why the spirit of Yahoo Yahoo is entering you. <laughs> because you have claimed a Yahoo voice car now. Now you just find any small thing on the internet. Just surfing. How to do people. That's what you are typing of me. <laughs> you better come for deliverance. At least that is now verse 11. He said the race is not to the swiftest. The battle is not to the strongest. Good thing does not happen to those of intelligence. It is a function of what? Time and chance. The verse says it happens to them all. Wait for your time to happen. Time used to happen on men. Wait for your time to. When your time happen. I've told you the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter verse 11. He makes things beautiful in his time. When your time happen. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Luke 8 15. It says, but the good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear the word, cling to it, and steadily. King James says, we patience produce what? So the promises of God is fertilized by patience. The promises of God is what? Fertilized. He said, with patience. Are we there? Produce what? Good fruits. So everything that has no patience attached to it might not produce something good. You know those kind of mango they used to force and write? How they used to look like. That's how your life will look like. Something that is prescribed. You'll be tasteless before men. Yes, though they are seeing the color, but you are tasteless. Luke 21, verse 19. He said, I'm reading the King James. Luke 21, 19. He said, In your patience, do what? Preserve your souls. So, in impatience, you lose your soul. Because you will make your soul vulnerable to the manipulations of demons. Impatience will make you lose your soul. Strange ideas will begin to fill into it. Let's do this now to survive. Let's do this to survive. Let's do this to survive. So only patience is a preserver. Hebrews 10 36. He said, Hold on to the confidence of your faith. For it has a great word, recompense of you. Hold on to it. First Timothy 6 11. He said, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and what? Patience. 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 You remove patience out of your life, your life will be a mystery. You will do things that it will, it will betray yourself. You will not believe you yourself could do that. I've seen people do all kinds of things just to wear clothes on their body. All kinds of things. Because of the impatience. Imagine the great... You know, most of the times in life, I've discovered that when it looks like you should not be patient again, is the time you need to hold on some more. Imagine after waiting for a prophet for three days. And I felt the people were leaving me. I was losing the members. And I decided to cut the sacrifice. That's when someone decided to come. And say, so what have you done? After three. Imagine he just waited one minute, one minute. Anytime you are seeing you are too much desperate, there is a miracle at the corner that the devil wants to scatter with impatience. I'm giving you a spiritual image. Anytime you see, so you are just under pressure. There is a miracle at the corner so close that the devil wants you to thwart it. By taking some kind of steps that God doesn't want you to. Is that okay? Psalm 37 verse 7. Are we getting blessed? Psalm 37 verse 7. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for what? For him. Fret not thyself because of him who prosper in his way. Stop envying all the Yahoo boys you are seeing in town. Some of them are armed robbers. A young man just lost his life because somebody came to kidnap. Tomorrow he'll carry a range over and pass the street. The lady say, Jesus, I can't believe it, I can't believe it. But somebody was dead now for him to write that. And you are there praying for it. It's because they see people that heals them. That's why they do it more. If everybody is filled so much with the Holy Spirit that you can discern and say this is ungodly word and you pass him. The only reason men feel the importance of material possession is because of not what it does to them, but what it means to others. I'm sure you know. If you know that when I no matter the quality of car, I, I ride and pass, somebody will just say, well done and pass me. Will people kill themselves to ride different types of cars? Anyone you see, you will put yourself inside. But they see what people will say towards that. You took somebody 100 million, the woman is crying now. And when you come now, say, I just like the guy, he sends me money a lot. Just like that. He will just send me 1 million and have a sharp hand. <laughs> and every curse that was released on him is on your head. It's on your head. 
because you are an accomplice in that wealth. I'm teaching you something you should know. Every cause is on your head. The family is there crying in pain and is there looking for who to plant that money on ungodly wealth. And sometimes we behave very unreasonable. The Bible says men have become unreasonable in their ways. How can you know the, the current situation of your country? And you see what a young man is doing. And he spends some kind of money. You never question him. What's the highest salary in this country now? You're working in a bank, 100,000. That is, you need to save and don't eat for one year. to get your first one million. Then the guy said he's working in a bank and gave you 10 million. And you wave. And I said, glory to God. Small girls with big God. <laughs> your fire is in a different place. <laughs> Flat 12. I'm telling you what's happening. Because some people recognize that. That's why they keep doing it. No one can tell them to their face and say, come, what's the source of your income? Sometimes I tell my wife, I said, I'm financially not having much. Then she sees me, maybe after a week or two, I give her something good. She asks me that question. Baby, where did you get it? So I need to be sure I'm not answering God's money. <laughs> no, I need that kind of accountability. Baby, where, you? where did you get it from? I said, oh, sorry, somebody blessed me. This person sent it to me. I showed her the other. But some of you share testimonies in church. I just want to thank God. This car that came just like that, the, the man just saw me and just gave <laughs> Who are you? What did you do? <laughs> and pastors contribute to it. Mm -hmm. They say, choir, lift up a song. Oh, Pop, Jesus, dance, dance. They sing and dance. Oh, wow. And everybody is looking for how to produce that kind of what? Test. That's why we must even be careful of the kind of testimonies we share and the way people share it. Mm -hmm. Because some can put people under pressure. Some testimony are intimidation. Not, not, not blessing. They are intimidation. And the church must wake up to that reality. Wake up. I'm going to say, and so... I was just moving like that. Pastor prophesied last week. And so I just something just happened here and there. And then somebody was selling 100 million. So I gave my mother like 15 side. And the young man sitting and said, God, like that. <laughs> Be patient. Don't let anyone put you under what? Pressure. Hebrews 6, verse 12. It says that we should follow those who through faith and patience obtain. That's how men get the promise. 15 says, we know of these men. That's what verse 15 says. He said, we know of them. How that the Lord wrought greatly with them. But we saw their pathway. We saw it. How they were patient. Waiting for the salvation of God. These days, no patience. Please wake up. A young lady was talking with me. She said, the way I've so suffered, I don't mind though. The guy must have, even if it's their who, it's not my business. Wow. Yeah. To me. And he says, he sent me a text message. To my face. Say, this is their who suffered. A man suffered to a point he was picking crumbs on the table of a man. And yet he still made it to heaven. God will not judge on it. He will be sending people like Luke. Say, Lazarus, this boy, you say you suffer, right? Lazarus. Lazi, judge him. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you judge. He will just be sending them and say, see your example. See your example. You have no word excuse. You will think you are the worst one suffering to you see other people's situation. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you've not heard people's stories, though. You've not heard. I'm a pastor, I'm privileged to hear stories of people. You will think you are suffering. So when you hear some kind of case, you will sit and say, God, how is it happening? How? On this same earth, one of my spiritual father, the way he suffered, he will go on this con shaft when people do kunu, the dust that they dry. He'll be waiting for the man to dry. That was just man to go and pick to eat. To pick to it, but we can see of him now. See how God turned their end. But many people can wait like that. A young man start ministry, he's under pressure. He say, If I can do these things, money will come. So he goes to Port Harcourt, quite the land, he used to sell it in the streets. Then he buy the water for phone number. When you wash her like this, it's very nice. Three, four, four. <laughs> and you know how we know the other list when you can see but cannot solve. A genuine man of God can either see and solve. Or does not even need to see to solve by saying statements, angel move. But you, some people just impress, just just see, see, see. You are seeing everything, but you are not solving nothing. Anabalis, no, let you have Babalao. Let's call it where? Oh, yes, Babalao. Chair, Uma, you are Mamalao. No, I'm saying this thing because this is the problem of this generation now. Now, a young lady was in my office some few days ago and she was telling me about a young man. That she went to meet and said, See your business. Along that third road there, this place they do all these peers and stuff. I don't want to go to this. What do you do? <laughs> the guy laughed, Can you do what I pay? I don't know why this is your 
you date me, I, t- I teach you. But once they, <laughs> once they pass through the streets now, you see the way ladies are trailing everywhere. Do you know? They, how do you know his source of where he says his father have it? Who is his father? Is a senator? Don't we know the names of Nigerian senators? Yeah, they, do they hide them? So where is your father's name inside? <laughs> Some ladies are dull, dull in the brain, dull. How will someone tell his father is a senator and you know the names of senators? His father's name is not inside. Where is he senating? <laughs> Abakuk 2 verse 3 He said the vision will not lie Wait for it That's the word Wait what? For it So the promises of God are something you look at patiently He said at the end it will speak At the end it will speak Number 13 Be a risk taker Resilient and unafraid of failure if you want to accomplish much in life. Be a risk taker. Resilient and unafraid of what? Failure. Sometimes I want to even match the degree of wealth for you in life to the degree of how much you have failed. One way to break the spirit of failure is to fail a lot. There is no kind of money I cannot put in any investment right now because of how much I have lost. Look up. In the jungle, the fox is the smartest. The giraffe is the tallest. The cheetah is the fastest. Right? The elephant is the biggest, but the lion is called the king of the jungle. Why? He's a risk taker. Unafraid of failure. See, risk simply means what your attention is on. When the lion sees an elephant, he doesn't see the size. He sees the meat. That if I can take this one, it can survive me one week. <laughs> That's how he thinks. But you see what? Oh, my God. It's too big. See, if you don't learn how to take risk, one of the rules of failure is to be, af- to be afraid to fail. Are we following? The first step to failure is to be afraid to fail. Let me repeat again. The first steps to, because as we are teaching you protocol of success, we should teach you protocol of failure. The first step to fail is to be afraid to fail. Many people have been like that all their life without taking a step. Just because of the fear to not doubt. Look at what Peter said. Though I have put all my expertise and it betrayed me, but at thy word. Because I felt the prompting of the Holy Ghost in me to do this thing. I will ignore the failure I had last night. His own was not last month, it just was last night. And then God is telling him, do it again. I don't know if you can dare like that. I don't know if you can dare. My wedding was delayed. I put 1.9 million into crypto. That was the end of it. 1.9. So a few years ago, I went to empty my account. They brought an investment option for me. I was here. I took my daughter, two of them. I said, follow me, Union Bank, straight down. You know when you want to fail, something moves you. Anytime you are under pressure, I say you want to fail. I descend it from experience. When you know that you cannot control yourself. <laughs> it's a demon as operating. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5 about the man in gatherance. He said no man can tame him. Yes. That's the operations of demons. You are just going like that. Just going <laughs> straight, you know, man. I saw that. Close this, my second account. He said, no, sir, we don't. Is he your money? <laughs> I shouted for the boy. I said, stop that. I don't joke with bankers. Close my this and give my money. He gave me. I sent it. After that, one month. Because I was supposed to get times three of it the next month. So also so triple. Wow, I just received a phone call. That like, hey, um, that this thing, they say police came and carried. I just I laughed. <laughs> you know you hear they say police came and I, I laughed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was left on me then I think the whole of my account was 15 years. Jesus. See, that season, eh, if you can remember Grace Shrey, maybe like is it two years now? <laughs> the season that anytime you say I'm worshiping very well, much long service to worship with long, you will enjoy falling. It was my pain. <laughs> When you start to say, take all of me. Oh. <laughs> it was a pain. There was nothing left, so I gave God everything. <laughs> Just take me. 2018, I remember. You know, if I had like 10 million, I can't say, take all of me before you ask me to give you. <laughs> But when I add nothing now, I'll just come to. I don't know if you remember that. I will sing long service. You see people on the ground, see the crowd. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll just be smiling. You know, that period, Pastor, I think I was with you one time in the office. None of my daughter just called me. Hello, Papa. Ah, I don't know. They, they've been struggling to want to get you, but they had to go through me since they know she's close to me. So I, I said, For where? Said NCCF. Laugh here. They want you to miss that. I said, Tell them I'm coming. I've heard the voice of God. <laughs> Because I need the realm. 
to survive. My star wedding was month before, even a dime. I don't have to go as transport. And I was happy in God. There is nothing I can't lose again, no. A man that has seen an ocean cannot see a river and be scared. There is nothing. Be a risk taker. That's why I can do so much now investment wise. Some of you are still doing one dollar, three dollar in crypto. Do you know how much I have there? If I show some of you, you go and look for kidnappers for me. <laughs> you know what's up there? Why was I confident to put money in there and there? Because of how much I've lost before. I'm not scared to lose anything. Nothing, I'm not scared. 5k you lost. You have not slept one week. In the night, you are just talking to yourself. 5k. Why have you A lie, a lie. <laughs> Please be unafraid to fail. Especially this life, everything big comes with some big amount of risk. There is nothing minded that is risk free. In, the the minister started, you don't know it's a risk. What if he failed? You think it's easy? What if you do fly and crusade? Nobody came. Okay. So if you don't know it was risk, <laughs> it's like telling Abraham, just leave your father's house and be going. That's how it is. To a place I don't know. Be a risk taker. Be a risk. There are still people that are making so. Any man you've seen doing so much, all right? In the financial world, especially, check the amount of risk he has, he has put into it, the kind of feelings he has had. Because for you to enjoy the dividend of the bull, you know, we call bull profit, mm -hmm. you must be ready to endure the mess of the blue. Mm -hmm. No bull can be messy, scatters and environment. Be able to endure that. Enjoy it. When you enjoy it, you still clean the bull, then put it on land and see how it works more on the farm. It's a two way. Please take risk. Tell your neighbor, take risk. Take risk. Don't be scared. Some of you, the risk you are even required to take is nothing compared to what others have taken. They say there's something. I'm not saying you should not do foolish things, though. But you want to start something with 5k and you have been prince since last year. Oh, oh. 5k. <laughs> I'm doubting whether you are wet or in the same direction. Oh, God. Let's finish up. 14. Keep your relationship with God intact. Job 22, 21 to 23. He said, Acquaint thyself with the Lord. And he will establish your peace. Acquaint thyself. He said, You gather gold as dust. Keep your relationship with God intact. Don't let anybody deceive you that you don't need God to survive. It's not true. It's not true. Some of them are battling issues, sicknesses and disease. Everywhere. With even the so much of money they have. Keep your relationship with God what? Intact. And talk to him on what? Everything. Anything you want to do, commit it to God's care. Commit it. Lord, this issue, this issue, I call for your intervention. Let your hands be upon it. There is nothing too urgent that you cannot pray about. The Bible says, as much as urgency he eat, Nehemiah, even when he appeared before the king and the king said, tell me your request. He said, I prayed to the Lord my God. Why is he standing before him? I prayed to the Lord my God to grant me faith. And yet he was still in the front of the man, talking and still praying. 15. Maintain touch with the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7 to 13. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter. And when he comes, he will teach you what? All things. Maintain touch with the Holy Spirit. In life, in between of life and death is the voice of the Holy Spirit. In life, in between life and death, is the voice of what? The Holy Spirit. Make sure your work with Him is intact and you can hear His voice. It will save you so much. Because by the end of this meeting right now, I prophesy that may money hit you you don't expect. Amen. And then somebody will send you a text message. You have just won $10,000. Call this number. And then the prophetic word I gave you just comes. The Kabbalah douche came out and died. I don't know, Father's word is this swift. Mm. Then you send and call the person. Then they say, send like 20k first, so I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> then when you are done, you come and meet me. <laughs> but no matter the fact that I release God's blessings on you, when you see that, the voice of the Holy Spirit tells you, mm -mm, this is not a blessing. This is not the blessing. Else you will make so much of errors and mistakes, you will gamble with your life. You will gamble with your life if you lack that 
inner voice to hear it clearly. 16. Make your vision speak. Are we getting blessed today? Make your vision what? Speak. Vision has a voice. You should give him volume. Vision has a voice. You should give it what? Volume. Make your vision speak. Have a good two and verse three. Say the vision is yet for an appointed time. It will not lie. It will what? Speak. How do you make your vision speak? One, engage the mystery of borrowed vessels. Engage the mystery of what? Borrowed vessels. You are selling a product, you are into a business, borrow vessels. What do I mean? Borrow people's platform. Use influencers to get your work out. Engage the mystery of borrowed vessels. Make your vision speak. Don't walk in the dark. Get a platform. The story of the hunter I like to always share to us, the hunter and the lion, that when you go to the, the, the house of an hunter, you see the heads of many lions, the skulls, right? You say, I killed this one in 1921. I killed this in 1922. I killed this in 1933. The difference is because they had a platform. If you give that lion opportunity, you will tell you the heads of many hunters too he has killed. <laughs> but because he doesn't have a platform to speak what he has also achieved, what are we saying? Don't walk in the dark. Give your vision volume. Give your vision volume. That's how you accomplish. People should know what you are doing. Even in the days of Jesus, though he didn't have that platform of maybe the social media and influencing, he never rested. The Bible said, let's go to the other city. They also need to know what is happening. Let's go to the other cities. Let's go to the other. That's the only thing you keep hearing from him. So that it can get as much spread as what possible. The Bible says in Psalm 66, I think they're about. He said he gave his word, many were they that accomplished it. He gave his word, many were they that what accomplished it. He sent his word to Jacob and enlightened Israel. One word that God gives a man might be for a generation. Don't limit the word to the man. He only gave a word to Jacob, for it had lighted what? Israel. One. So make your vision words speak. It's one big problem for people. People should see what is happening with you. Don't stay in the dark. It's a problem. For many people, can, God can be doing mighty things through them. Excellent things, but nobody knows. A great man said, a man that is walking or doing great things without anybody being aware is like a man walking in the dark. Even till date, as big as MTN could be, they still don't advert. Have you a tiny social media platform, not see glow? With influential people there. If he still use the video. Is that not so? As big and mighty as they are. Why? Just to get more rich. Much people should be blessed by these things we are doing. Imagine they are just blessing a few in one corner. Would they be relevant? They have no impact. So their impact is also measured by the amount of people they can reach. Make your vision speak. Tell us, neighbor, make your vision speak. Isaiah 28 29. Are we end now? Isaiah 28 29. Are we blessed already? Isaiah 28, 29. The Bible says, This also cometh from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. So, this tells us, let me say something before we get this. This tells us that in Isaiah 9, of a six, there about where the Bible says, And his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Huh? No. The actual word is, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God. Is that okay? That people mix that a lot. So the Bible said this also coming from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. That's our next point. Cultivate skillfulness and excellence. God is excellent in working. When you see his products, when you see the work of his hands, what you see is the display of excellence. Excellent in working. You give your, your friend your, your notebook to read. They are confused. Now they are scared of the course. Go everywhere you're just cancelling. Everywhere. They can't even read a full page and get the message. You're not excellent. The Bible says, Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in where all the earth. Let your name be attached to excellence. Make it a standard for your life. Proverbs 22, 29, Amplified. It says, show me a man skillful and excellent in his business. He will stand before kings and not what? Ordinary men. Skillful and excellent. 
in his business. Daniel 6 and verse 3, the Bible says, And he was found with what? An excellent spirit. An excellent spirit. Now, let me show you something in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3 that will shock you. Daniel 6, 3. I bet you've not seen that before. Daniel 6, 3. Look at what the Bible says. Then this Daniel was preferred above what? Precedents and princes. What it means it was that putting him in the position of a president is a belief in. They said above precedents and princes. <laughs> because of why? An excellent spirit. When you put anything in his, hand, in his hands, it does not spoil. You can entrust things in his hands and go and sleep about them. He will produce quality and excellence out of them. They gave you things to do. Shout. They've been shouting. Shout. Isaiah 12 and verse 5. Are we getting blessed? The science of accomplishment. Isaiah 12 and verse 5. It says, Sing unto the Lord, for he had done excellent things. This is known all over the earth. So, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that and it caused everything to produce after its kind. So, if this is known with God, that's why I've been doing this for you since. If it is known with God, what should be known with you too? Excellence. Yes, we should ask you your father. Because some of you are following the God you don't look like. Challenge yourself every day. The Bible says, and he created man in his own what? Image. And after his likeness. The word after means a followership. So you now begin that process of trying to be like him by reading his word. After. Follow after the way I look like. Do you understand that? David, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 18. How that they need demons to get out of the king's soul. And a man said, I know of a man in the house of what? Jesse. Who is skillful in playing. He doesn't just play. Some of you, you sing. I'm already on the puppy. I say, in Jesus' name, you sing. Oh, God, God. You are a bad person. Oh, my God. Skillful in playing. He knows when the Holy Ghost has come and when the demon has gone out. Not that when the demon has gone out, he's still just disturbing sound now with sound. Some of you are not skillful. Not. When there is a tense of the prayer, just disturbing everybody. Like something they are trying to kill and they put a rope in. Are we together? Are we following? Skillful in playing. There were many people that could play the app, but for David, he was what skillful. He had skill attached to it. First Chronicles 28 and verse 21. First Chronicles 28, 21. The Bible says, and behold, the causes of the priest and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God, and there shall be with thee all manner of work, workmanship. Every what willing and skillful men, even for the requirement of his service, he desired that they should be what skillful. You come to churches right now, you see choir members that take it to be the answer. Say she has been singing last week. We have not been singing. And they gave you now, you have all the keys. Oh, you have it. Even the keyboardist is confused. He got and got no, complain. But you think it's rational now. Why this one sang? I'll sing. I'll not sing. The Bible says they should be skillful. They should be skillful. Don't be taking people when they are already approaching God. They are going, so we lift the way. They are almost near the throne. You carry them back now. They are a very unskilled person. Train yourself. So you should stop complaining that they are not rationing it. You should what? Develop yourself. Develop yourself. That should be your challenge. How can I get better that I will not also be ignored like this? How can I get better? Psalm 33 verse 3. Psalm 33 verse 3. Are we getting blessed today? It said, sing new songs of praise to the Lord. Play what? Skillfully. The girl is sweet to sing with a very smooth voice. You keep on listening. Only God knows where he's getting sounds from. <laughs> Off. It's playing on skillfully. Are we seeing that now from scripture? Say, just let's leave him like that. Let him be playing like that too. Because he's the one that has been called for the other very well. But it's very unskillful. It's irrelevant to that thing at that point in time. That's scriptures. He said, you should play. It means God is saying, I will not hear you if you are playing on skillful. See, look at this. If the way the angels sing, as we have thought in Revelation, is that in synchrony in heaven. It means to bring God down from that place. So you will not listen to that angel again. You should sing either close to them or better than them. So most of the time, if I even see the way you are singing, I should be doubting what is flowing in that presence. You understand? You just sing. 
no matter that people are falling. Because I told you there are some kind of encounters that depict the absence of God. You don't know. The Bible says in Exodus 33, and he told Moses, he said, because of the hardness of these people, I will send an angel to go with thee. Moses said, no, you must be the one to go. So the coming of that angel is depicting that God is not going. There are encounters that depict his absence. First Chronicles 15:22. First Chronicles 15, 22. I want to show you. You know, I'm trying to deal with choir people very well today. He said, and Chenaniah, chief of the Levite, was for what? He instructed about song. He was MD because why? He was no, he was anointed. I thought they should consider the anointing. No, get this key, then we put the oil on you. He was skillful. He was skillful. Skillful. Are we seeing that? That's why they chose him to be instructed for songs. God doesn't joke with it, please. Because when choir members begin to hear this, it will make them get serious with their assignment and responsibility. Not doing ration. You will sing to their sin next week. Sing to their sin. Some people are created for backup. That's their calling. They are created. Their own assignment. That is if they back you up, they will like run to Moses. Oh, man. Once they are the one behind that this thing. But they want to own mic now. That's the problem. How many of you still want to join your room? Daniel chapter 1 and verse 4. Bible says the excellent spirit was found in this Daniel. 18. The 10 rule to the signs of accomplishment. Master honor. Master honor. First Peter 2 17. He said, Honor all men. Honor what? All men. Master honor to open doors for you. Sometimes your ability will betray you. Because when you look too much on your ability, you think that you're better than everybody. But you forgot that you can have the ability but don't have the access. Yes! Joseph had the ability to interpret dream, but he can't get to the king's palace. The man who had no such ability had the access to take him there. If he had abused the butler, he would have stayed in his prison all his year interpreting dreams. And be proving to do. Do you know how anointed I am? I can tell you any type of dream or explain it like this. Then you see less anointed people on the throne. Why? Because they knew the law of what? Oh no. And God has made everyone relevant in the scheme of things. Everyone is that not what I talked about the gift of the Holy Ghost? First Corinthians 12. He said, And to one, and to another, and to one, not only to you. <laughs> there is an another. He gave unto one the gift of this, and to what? Another. Always know it though. There is an another. It's not like you are not all there is. You are not all there is. One man is too small to be completely revealed by this God. The only part of him you see is the one he chose to show you. If one man can reveal him, then he's not qualified to be called God. The Bible says he dwells in the light no man can what? So he just shines a function of it. How can your, your finite mind describe an infinite God? How? Then you see people asking stupid questions. Where is God? Why is How can you comprehend it? Where was God when he was created Adam and me? Look at you, they born. How old are you? How old are you that you're asking that kind of question? Somebody I can just off your brain and you're mad now this day. Master what? Honor. Honor people. Stop looking for people by force to honor you. She did not greet me. What do you take out of those nonsense? Greet them. How are you doing? Has been your day. Honor people for everything. Is that okay? Honor more men. 19. Build your verbal confidence. I read through the story and the life of Jesus. There was nobody who was afraid to talk to. Some of you cannot stand before people and express yourself. Even when you stand, they will not hear anything. I see you are talking to yourself. The difference most of the time that makes people succeed outside the school environment is this ability to speak. I'm telling you, it's not even their grade or their degrees. It's the ability to speak, their verbal, com- I'm teaching you a life principle. No it and no peace. Your ability to stand before anyone and express yourself is a vital thing you must learn outside this environment to survive. Build your verbal confidence. Stand and approach people. When you need to help them, please, I'm so sorry. I'm looking for how to get an access to this. Is there any way I can get it from you? No, I don't wish I cannot tell the person. No. I cannot. And you wallow in that pain. Number 20, learn to plan. Luke 14, 28. He says, CS that a man that wants to build his house without first sitting down to count what? The cost. Proverbs say, build your work and then prepare your home afterwards. Meaning have job before you think of marriage. Is that okay? Even relationship is a full-time job. Some of you are already pensioners and you are you are dating. <laughs> Pension that you are not sure of becoming consistently. Hmm? That's how you go and do your own. So you can have inflow. 21. 
master disappointment. These are principles of life that will make you survive. Please go back to these two series and listen to it at least, I say how many times? 20 times. Then I can have peace of mind that I've taught you well. Master what? Disappointment. Because that's what is killing men in this world right now and pushing them into things. The way they planned something didn't turn out that way. They gave up and said, I can't go this way anymore. Bam! They're in prostitution. So my name robbery. So those that can't do those two. They're in depression. So my inside lagoon. They've thrown themselves now. Are we following? Master, be persistent in life. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. The Bible says, And after David and his men returned back to the camp and found out that their wives and daughters had been taken away, his men took stones to stone him. Do you know what it is for your own followers to say, Hi, ah, you don't want following again? Do you know what it is for a situation to occur? And your followers look like that. At this point, you're on your own. The Bible says, They took stones, men he raised, to stone him. And the Bible says David weep, but at the point he encouraged himself. Master disappointment. Because it was in the midst of that strength that he was able to know the step to take. Most of the time people come here and they are sharing the situation. I say, see, stop being emotional. Calm down. Then you think straight. You can't come here and eh, eh, you are crying. God will do nothing in the absence of mere sympathy. If he sees your faith, he will show you his faithfulness. Calm down. 1 Samuel 30, what? Verse 6. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Job lost everything. Job 14, verse 14. He said, I will wait for the days of my appointed time till my change come. He said, brother, you just bought a range over. I don't know what you do, but I celebrate what God has done with you. If God visits my neighbor, then he is in my neighborhood. I celebrate you and I'm waiting till he comes to my own door and do the same for me. Now we together. Job 14 and verse 7. He said, There is hope for a tree even when it is cut to the ground. At the scent of water, it will brood for the day. That's how you should talk. That's how you should talk. Sometimes you are sharing pain and just sharing statements to people that can never help you. You go and cry and cry and cry. You cried, cried, cried everything. Now. They gave you 100 naira. <laughs> also, we won't tell you sorry. Some people like to live in self pity. Why? Micah said, why do you cry? Is there no king in you? You have been taught things to survive. You can sit in your room and say, Lord, I put men under compulsion and pressure right now to bring the help I need. And instead of you to disgrace your God before them, they will come saying, God laid in my heart that I should give you this. God laid in my heart. That's the way I live my life. Stop looking for the world we are right now. Don't give a damn for sympathy. Oh. What you are doing is that you are just disgracing yourself generally. Normally you are indoor. That is an outward disgrace. Because I give you two weeks, you hear that somebody knows that story. Say, Can you believe what this sister told me? Ah, people are suffering. No, oh, people are suffering. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know people down to their member. When they sustain, they know it's gossip. Is that not so? Say, they are suffering. Oh, in this world. <laughs> no, there is an amabolic spirit. Oh, wow. <laughs> I say, stop looking for what's simple. Put God's word to work. Look at the myriads of testimonies. Do you know how much they give me joy? Put God's word to work. Come out of your room and say, as I go out today, money meets me everywhere. I put men under the... He said, I have commanded a widow in Zerephant to feed you. The woman was under what? Compulsion. It was a command. Not because she had a giving spirit. He said, I have commanded a raving bed. That's the most stingiest bed on earth. They know born and with each other. <laughs> Then you will know the God that created you. <laughs> you don't know even the animals are very scared. One animal misbehaved in Thailand and a man caused him to kick that snake and say, I bind you from your, and your kind from the whole of Thailand. He did, there are no snakes there. One nature misbehaved. And David prayed and said, Let there be no rain or dew on man. Give him. He did. Rain can fall anywhere in this world, not on that mountain. You don't know. So they used to hear what? Is human beings that difficult to say? I don't hear what. Because sometimes even when they know that God, you don't see, you see demons. Do you, they, you are set fire. The tea is burning, but you see, I'm in a girl. They know. Very stubborn. So master what? Disappointment. Don't let it weigh you down. You just check your results. Last semester, you got two F. From then, the next one is three. Next one is four. Next one is five. Why? You are just, you are tired of school. You have joined, school is calm. All your status, school is calm. School is calm. You yourself, you are scammed. Oh my God. 
that a man cannot understand that the blows of life are not physical exercises but for spiritual muscles. And you are making those kind of statements. You know what others have faced and they still survived? Have you heard the testimony of others? Have you heard what they went through against all odds? And they are where they were today. A great woman of Prime Winfrey was raped at the age of 11. She was raped at multiple times. The great woman of God, Josh Mayer, was raped by a father from childhood to almost when she was 20 something. You know her? And even the mother was away. And the mother was so scared of the dad that when he wanted to rape, allow him. But she didn't allow her background to put her back on the ground. See what she has become. You don't have an excuse. You don't have what an excuse. In fact, those things should motivate you so much that you must make it in life that your story will one day inspire this generation. I can't be ashamed of what I've been through in life. I ask some of my children, I sit down and I tell them a very dirty part of my past. And I ask them when I'm done. I say, so after saying this to you, what does it mean to you? Because I know who I am now. That's how you can talk. You are scared because you have not challenged yourself to become something great. That no matter what you say about your past, people don't look at it as anything again. There's nothing. Because they see you with what you are now. Master disappointed. 22. Be grateful at all times to God and to men. Gratitude opens doors of favor and multiplication. Even Jesus thanked God for every little. When he saw that it was just five loaves of bread, he didn't say, ah, and they are 5,000. No. What did he say? Father, think that we could even see a little. Be grateful to God and to men for what? Everything. Some people are bad. People do things for you, you feel it's your right. No man owes you anything. Know it very early in life, not even your uncle. He was not created because of you. Ozu, Ozu. So if they do anything for you, count this as an act of what? Privilege. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. A man with so much of dreams and aspiration, having made so much impact in the United Kingdom, I think went to South Africa, made so much of impact, and then came to Nigeria, making an impact to be the first one to build a 21-story skyscraper, died in the inside of it. And then I said, I don't have a house. Lord, where are you? Give me just a house. Give me a house. Sometimes when you look through about life, you know that in everything, you have to give him thanks. Somewhere again, that same site, working not their fault, looking for their own daily bread. And not that they were wealthy, they were very poor. Maybe poorer than you, that is completely don't have money. They came to collect 1,000 for that day as laborers. They died inside. That's why one time, Jesus asked them a question. He said, did you hear of the men? How many of you know that a church in the Bible collapsed? And men died inside. See long, right? He said, did you know of those scenarios? The Jesus was asking, he said, was it their sin? Did they sin? They were trying to tell them, be grateful. Be grateful. In everything, any position and condition you find in life, be what? Be grateful. Be grateful. Any position, find yourself, be grateful. There are people dying, spending money on drugs on a daily basis. And here you are. Your problem is that you don't have TV to come to inside the campus and you're angry. You go to your room and you're scattered on your Bible. Lord, where are you? Lord, you're scattered everywhere. Something's wrong with you. It's a foundational problem. Daughter. No, Kovun, Kovun. Oh, wow. Be grateful. There are some that have all the money in the world but their body to put that clothes in is not intact. Dealt with people. I was watching a broker yesterday. A woman came and was crying. She's looking for a child for 11 years now. First IVF. You know IVF is what they do now. But she did the first one, 1.3. Second one, 1.8. Third one, 2.3. The last one she did now, 3 million no child. Total 7. I think 7.8 million there about. And what she did is I for a child. That a mad woman in your area has given birth. All these small, small girls now. 10, 11, 12. On what temperature? You can't tell you that I'm telling you. 7.8 million. You can't be grateful. <laughs> you can't be grateful. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I'm grateful. For everything, I'm grateful. For the things you have done now, I'm grateful. And for the things I am hoping that you will do for me, I'm grateful. Please be grateful. Please be grateful. Be grateful about life. Be grateful. I was on my own, on, the, on, on my way home, going at home some few days, and it takes my phone out of my hands. But here they scatter spread bullets on people's body and the guy's dead. Mm -hmm. I should not be, I should be crying and say, Lord, where were you? Where they took my phone, then he will ask me, where were you? When my son was on the cross, where were you? When he was allowing his own son to die, where were you? That's why sometimes you look at all these things and you show gratitude for life. I was told in town a long, young lady because of iPhone, is it 13 that you call that nonsense? They cut a two busts on the ground. They are dragging for 13. It's a sense of it. You don't have value for your life. Face it now. It's a boy that bought it. That's why she wants to die on it. Sometimes I should be alive and I can get times million, a million of that thing. Then that's you will be dragging. Some of you don't thought life when you are dragging with Amro. Now they've cut your neck. Change your behavior. 
Alright? Change your perception of value. You are bigger than anything material. Because once you have life, you can get it. Why should you be dragging someone for phone? Give them the phone. Tell them what more do you need? As long as I have my life intact, I will get those things in multiple folds. Be grateful to God. Be anything that happens, just say, Lord, I don't understand why I thank you. They are not happy. Some situations can come that look sorry to us. How we are not happy to hear those kind of news. But in all of it, say, Lord, I am what? Grateful. And I don't know what you are doing right now. But I still thank you. He was talking about his aunt DTS. My aunt gave birth to a twins and they, she died in the, in, in the midst of it. Why? She was out of blood and there was no blood. A private hospital. And she died leaving behind twins. Now, he might be angry now that his own was here. What of the one that lost his life? Don't wait till you hear people's story before you know that you need to open your mouth and say, Father, thank you. Sometimes you think it's the worst that has happened to you. Till you hear the worst of others. Till you hear the worst of others, then you, you go back and say, Lord, I was a fool. It's a fool. They are just giving some days back of a woman that goes in the middle of the night with dog's beans to pick food for her children to eat. And your problem was that you don't get it. That's because you saw it. Now. And you know, she know one good thing about it. Your insult and your complaint does not make God more God or Godless. Mm -hmm. Threaten him. I will not come to church again. Who you here? <laughs> he won't miss you. I assure you by the mercies of the Lord, he won't miss you. Go and on TV, just on this Christian channel, have you? Go and sort a woman and shout inside there. He is the Lord forever. He is the Lord. Go and check and see what somebody, you are there, only you. Very fit in decimal to, to oh the situation. <laughs> in everything, thank him. Thank him. That's what I'm saying. Thank him. Be grateful. People do things for you, even if it is not looking big. Thank them. That somebody help you to pick something from even the ground. Tell him thank you. It's a culture you can cultivate. Because if you find it difficult to thank him, and even God, you will not thank. I speak wound. Thank anything little. I get home. My wife served me my food. I say thank you. When I'm done eating, I say thank you. Why? There are many men that they provide the food, yet the man is tormenting them. They will beat this shake out of the man's body. <laughs> Even food you will not see to chop. So I am grateful. There are some that the money is there, they cook, but the food is not sweet. And the man has wife already. What will he do? The man said, not divorce. But I saw food, and the food is sweet. Thank you. You don't know what you are enjoying. You don't know what you are what? Enjoying. Please, in everything, let's be what? Show gratitude to God and to what? To men. All right? That was the secret of Jesus. In everything, he always gives. Even when he came to the grave of Lazarus, what did he say? But I thank you for you always. He didn't begin to look at him. And when he did that, he caught the guy like he was in another room. He didn't say, rise up from there. He said, Lazarus, come out. Gratitude impacts you with divine confidence. What we call god confidence. It impacts you with it. You just that you have said, Father, I'm grateful. It's like you, you, you put it in his hands to take charge. That's why I said it in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. He said, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known. He said, And he will give you a peace that surpasses. People cannot explain and say, ah, with all this, this person is still happy. It's my secret. I lost so much. But you know the good thing about it? I looked at all the things I lost and I asked myself in the first place, how did they come? So in all of it, I couldn't question God and shout and scream and say, where are you? I said, Father, what? Thank you. And I did my wedding without a single song. I spent about two point something, not a single song. One person alone dropped seven hundred. I lost that. But I wanted to have labor and do salary work to be getting monthly salary pay. Maybe by now, I'll still be thinking and praying for God's mercies on when I'm married. I'm teaching you how it works. Be grateful. Is that okay? 23, be a problem solver. It announces and elevates you. Make contributions everywhere you find yourself. That was the secret of Joseph. Not that he had the ability to interpret him, but he had the ability to give the solution. And that's why Pharaoh said, there is no one better to manage it than the one that brought the solution. There's no one. How did David go to the palace? When he there was under torment from a man called Goliath, he went there and said, I will kill him for you. See, don't run away from problem. There are your points to announcement. Solve them. When you see situation, don't shy away from there. I want to dodge them. Stay there and say, oh Lord, just give me an idea. What can I do? Father, give me, give me, speak to me, Lord. Tell me, how do we go about this? It will announce and what? And elevate you. 24, start early. Start early. 
Make all the mistakes on time and learn. Make all the mistakes in your preparation so that your manifestation will be flawless. Start early. Anything you are doing in life, start on time. Time is a factor in destiny because destiny is measured by time. You live from 1900 to... Is that how they put obituary? It's measured by time on this earth. Start on time. There are mistakes you shouldn't be making at a certain age of your life. I'll teach you maybe next week or next week. I want to teach on finance next week. So I'll teach next week on 13 things you should do before you are 30. 30 things you should do and know before you are 30. I'll teach next week on that. There are mistakes you should not be making at a certain age of your life. You shouldn't. The things you need to know now. Put them to work and make all the mistakes you can make. Let your manifestation be glorious. 25. Maximize time. Maximize time. Don't waste your time. When you waste your time, you waste your life. Touch schedules and daily accomplishment to your life. Wake up each day and write on what are the things I am supposed to do or accomplish today. And at the end of the day, look at it to see whether you truly did them. Now, it's beyond you just listening to all I said. From the heart of your heart, what decision do you want to make after this day? What decision? Do you want to read history? Or you want to make history? Make a choice. Finally, for this morning, be accountable to a mentor. Be accountable to a mentor. Books, tapes, MP3s teach you. Mentorship show you and push you. You have read now. Have you not read that you are supposed to wake up and pray? How many times have you woken up and pray? Books, tapes, MP3, video clips, MP4. They teach you. Mentorship show you. And what? Push you. I'm sorry, I'm going to do this now and get back to me. Because you know you'll be accountable. Somebody will ask you, have you done it? You will have to go and what? Be accountable to a mentor. A father is a feather for you to fly. Be accountable to a mentor. Nobody say you will not know the things you love know without a father. But you will not utilize them much without a father. That's what we are saying. Do you understand the difference? We are not saying that you cannot know them, but you will not gain that speed you think you are looking for in life. Be what? Accountable. Sometimes come to a father and say, Sir, I want to build my financial life. Please hold me accountable for it. Sit with him and talk. So what do you think are the things I need to do? You start this business, get back to me in two weeks time. Start this one, get back to me in two weeks time. What do you need? Be accountable like that. So I want to grow my spiritual life. My intention is to read four books a month. This. So I want to be accountable on that matter. Have you finished the book you're supposed to read this week? Or I get back to it. That's what we call mentorship. It's not guy. Because some of you are actually people ninjas. So I like the way he's too, he's so he's so handsome. Oh Jesus! That's what you're That's your mentorship. You know what? You become mental little. Continue. Okay. Be accountable. Accountability is the bone of mentorship. Accountability that somebody can hold you responsible for the outcome of the what? Your life. Push you and say that thing you say you do, do it now. And that's what the bad part of mentorship people don't like. To hold them what? People don't like it. Allow me to do it the way I like to do it, the time I like to do it, at my pace. Just allow me like that. And like, that's why life will happen to you too. The time it's wished to happen, you can accomplish in life. You can do exploit in life. It is not a mystery. It's just the guiding sets of what? Principles. And when you put them to work, rise up to your feet. When you put them to work, you will see what the results of your life turn out to be. All we've taught right now affects even accomplishment, whether in your academics. Put these things to work. You start early, you read, you hunt for information, you, you network with others, places you don't understand, somebody puts you through and teach you. They work everywhere. A priest law of gravity does not hold only in Nigeria. It holds even in the US. That's how there's no American Bible and African Bible. The Bible works everywhere. That's the principle of his word. Everywhere to produce the same results. Please put them to work. Put them to work. That's the only sign that you came to church. That everything you've heard, you go back and say, Lord, which one can I start to put to work in my life from today? Because I, I told you, some of you, the information in your head is almost one terabyte now. But your life is not even a bit. If I know what some of you know, I won't be where I am right now. I'll be better now than I am. If I know what some of you know. But life is not about accumulation, but assimilation. What are you doing with what you have gotten? That's what life is all about. Some of the things I've said today are not actually new to you. You have heard them. Some of the things pastor listened to a tape, right, or a convention. He said, Papa, there is nothing they were saying that you have not said. You have heard them. But the question is, how many have you chosen to put to work? How many? Look at what my son said. He put this to work. Did he produce the results for him? How many have you 
your chosen people to walk. And say, let me find out whether these things be so, whether they are true. Let me give myself just one year. One time I told so, 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 a, a few of my sons, I said, check your life. Give yourself one year to this thing. See what it will happen. Look at their life. Just put it and see whether this thing is true or not. Don't just look forward to next week. So I, I come and write notes. We don't raise secretary. There's no secretarial study. Is that you become what the world talks about. You become what the world what talks about. Put those words to work. Put those words to work. Put those words to work. Even if the first time you say, Father, throughout this week, I want to form it as a culture. I will be what? Great. Even my children knows me. All of them. There's nobody that does anything for me. I say, go and get the next thing you see from my mouth is what? It is inside the blood. Thank you. I'm grateful. Sometimes I see how busy some of them can be. I apologize for not saying anything. Why am I doing that to you, Lord, right? I said, I'm sorry. Took me out of my school. Can you help me to do this? Yes, I'm a father, but it's not a right. I could understand. No, I'm not acting like I see. I'm a controller, I'm a ruler. Without knowing that this person is stressed. He or she maybe might just be coming from something difficult. So I need to apologize. I'm sorry. Can I please? What am I sending to her? In the message that this is the way you should live your own life. When you are privileged in the position, don't sit at the table. No. Oh, no one there. Without them, that position is useless. Is that not so? The relevance of that position is that you have people you can talk to. Is that not so? Yes, it's useless. That I see some of these men and this governor and this thing. When they just come from the position, they walk in the open and they walk in the open. And they are walking with the same person that they walk with. And they just like, they stop their hands and talk. Tell him, Father, we have heard your word this morning. Let your word change us. Let your word affect our lives on every side. May we not be the same again. Touch me. Transform my life completely. Make me a better person, oh God.